Okay, questions for head coach Steve Clifford. We'll get started. First question goes to Josh Robbins, The Athletic. Steve, when you reviewed on film, what stood out to you that maybe you didn't uh, discuss last night with us? Uh, well, obviously the turnovers, you know, were the, I would say the big negative. Um, but we did uh, a lot more good things than bad. Uh, I thought we competed, you know, just uh, regardless of when things were going our way, we had good concentration, good intensity when things went against us, you know, guys hung in there and, uh, you know, we put good possessions to, uh, at both ends of the floor and against a team like that, that's hard to do. So I think, uh, as much as anything, it was just our approach, uh, and then our defense in the fourth quarter. Dan Savage, OrlandoMagic.com. Cliff, prior to the game, we spoke you know, at length about Miami and just how important attention to detail was. How did you feel that your group did with that, especially in the closing moments of a close game? Yeah, I think in the fourth quarter, as I, you know, I was just talking with Aaron Gordon about that. For sure, we had some – we were uh, – our, def our best defensive quarter, I think, was, to be honest, was – the fourth and then the beginning of the game, like the first six, seven minutes, the starters were also uh, very dialed in with details and everything. And, um, you know, Miami, you know, they just, they don't get possessions away. They're so purposeful at both ends of the floor that if you don't do that, it, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to, uh, you know, to compete with them and have a chance to win. So I think that part, especially for early in the year was good. And I think it also does speak to the fact that we have a lot of guys uh, back, you know, that are comfortable playing together. And, uh, you know, hopefully that'll help us here in this first stretch of the season. Do you have a follow-up, Dan? Yeah, and, and as, to, as to Aaron, he bat battled foul trouble, but when he's locked in defensively like that, you know, especially in, in critical moments, how much does that do for the team and set the tone for you guys? Oh, it, it, it's a difference maker, you know, and, and he's, you know, I think people view him as uh, or, or under, understand how good he is as an individual defender, but his team defense is very good also. And last night, uh, he made three or four plays uh, in terms of help defense and pick and roll defense and uh, pick and roll or dribble handoff rotations that, you know, just showed how, how locked he was, locked in he was to the game plan and what we had to do to try to have a chance to limit them. Philip Rossman Reich, Orlando Magic Daily. Hey, Coach. Um, pace was a was a big talking point throughout much of last year and, and heading into the bubble. What did you think about the the team's pace last night? And and you know that seemed like there were some moments where this there, where the game was a little chaotic. And I know that's some place somewhere where this team has struggled in the past. How do you think they handled some of that last night? I think um, that's a, that's a great question because I think that's one of the key points for us going forward is figuring out. Um, you know, it, it always starts with tempo. You know, I mean, because the tempo of your offense obviously impacts your defense. And for every team, you really can't do a lot else until you can find the tempo that's going to work for your team. And I just think that, you know, I counted last night four possessions, um, three in the second quarter, one in the third, that were just totally like, you know, whatever you want to call random, you know. And, and on three of those four, you know, we turned the ball over. And yet I just look at our, our group and how we can play best. And I think that it's, it's going to be the risk reward is there for us to continue to try to play faster. Um, and you could see last night, you know, playing 10 guys is part of that too. But, you know, I, th I think we're playing faster, but it's not so breakneck that we can't be back and play well in the half court defensively also. So, but that's something that we're going to have to watch closely. Josh Cohen, OrlandoMagic.com. Hey, Coach, uh, with Markel able to get into the paint so much, do you foresee him drawing a lot more fouls this year and getting to the free throw line? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's something that we talk about a lot, layups, free throws. Um, you know, our, our league is so much about the three-point game, which is critical. But at the end of the day, they're still the two best possessions. You know, get a layup is good, but getting fouled is by far, 
the best thing you can do offensively and the worst thing you can do defensively. It's like last year, I think it's possessions per shot. So this isn't, this is not counting turnovers, but per shot, if you get fouled, it's like 1.55. The next best thing you can do is shoot a layup, which is like 1.36. So those are, you know, the free throw game is, you know, it's, it's still, it's, it's, it's how you're going to win. And, um, so I think for all the guys, what we've been talking about is finding ways to get to the free throw line and then trying to find ways to get layups. You know, last night we we finished well at the rim, but, you know, they shot a lot more at the rim than we did. So, and again, that's going to speak to also, obviously, when you're getting the ball to the basket, however it is, a pick and roll, a drive, a cut, you're going to get fouled more. David Steele, Fox Sports, Florida couple for you, Coach. Uh, have you added the up the deflections from last night, um, paint touches? I know those are things that you keep a, a close close eye on. And also um, on the offensive glass and getting second chance opportunities. Um, I know that's a, a little change that you guys have made this year. Those three areas, uh, could you give us a, a review of last night? Yeah, so we had 41 deflections, which is good. Um, you know, uh, it's not, you know, except, I mean, we've had games, you know, where we have, we've had high 40s before, but usually what we always tell the guys is the nights when we get 38 or more, we re- usually play well defensively. Because, um, you know, our turnovers were a problem for us and their turnovers were a problem for them. And a lot of it was, I think, good defense. And a lot of it was early, early season offense, frankly. And then... The inside out numbers, um, it was like the ball hit the paint mid 60s, like maybe 66, 65 times. And it didn't hit the paint. It was like in the 40s. So I think it was solid, you know, not great, but good. And it's something that in the uh, in the preseason, our ball hit the paint numbers weren't great. So it was better than that. I actually thought that our offense for the most part um, was good. I mean, they're, they're so good with their hands. And obviously Jimmy Butler is, he plays like Dwayne Wade used to play. I mean, just, he plays like a safety, like LeBron does. And if you don't know where he is, you know, I think he had five steals at halftime and you know, that's, that's how he's always played. The offensive rebounding part is actually when we went, we had success on, I think uh, when we sent two or more guys to the offensive glass last night, we got an offensive rebound like 40% of the time. And, uh, you know, MCW uh, was a big part of that. Um, You know, Kim is a good offensive rebounder. And I I think for me, the offensive rebounding part is is an aspect of the game that we have to continue to emphasize. And again, there were three teams last year in the league, I think two years in a row, that were both top five in second chance points and in getting back. And those are good goals for our team to have. Roy Perry, Orlando Sentinel. Steve, you talked about uh, coming into the game, how difficult Miami's offense is to defend and particularly their three point shooting. They were only seven of 20 last night. And obviously, you know, they missed a couple of shots maybe that they normally would make, as you mentioned, early season offense, but how pleased were you with your three point defense and you know what, How were you guys able to limit them to just 20 attempts last night? Well, one thing that we're doing more this year, you'll see is, um, you know, we're switching more, uh, you know, which again, it keeps you out of rotations and it should help your three point defense. And that's how we're going to start. Cause you know, our three point defense defense last year, when we weren't as good defensively, that was the biggest problem area. Uh, I thought we were really, uh, we were more aggressive um with both uh Robinson and Hero you know about trying to get them to play inside the line and uh, and our five men were a big part of that also and I thought we did a solid job with that um the biggest thing they really hurt us on high pick and rolls and in the fourth quarter our our high pick and roll defense was better um but in this game in our league you know outside of guarding like the great great player you know, it's it's the, uh, you know, your high pick and roll defense. You know, well, any pick and roll defense altogether is the toughest thing. And there are things that 
you know, you know, we didn't do today, but we're going to do on, uh, on the 26th in the morning before we play that we have to fix. Back to Philip. Hey coach. Um, both, both Cole and Chuma looked like they had some really good moments last night. When you, when you go back and look at the tape, how, how did they seem like they adjusted, especially as, as the game went on to kind of finding their, their place uh, within, within the team in, in a regular season game? I thought, for, I mean, for their first game, I thought they both did a really good job. And, you know, the one thing is it's always going to start with just competing. And, you know, they both compete very naturally. These aren't guys who, you know, whatever you do in practice, you know, they're on it. It's easy for them. Um, you know, they're not the kind of guys I think that, uh, you know, have to get themselves ready to play three on three or two on two. So I just think that their natural competitive spirit is a big plus. And then plus they also, they all have, they both have good basketball IQ. You know, they learn quickly. There's going to be obviously organizationally like in pick and roll coverages and some aspects of offense early in the season, there's going to be some mistakes just because, again, they haven't had a lot of time. You know, again, this is where the no summer league, no optional workouts in September, that's all the stuff that we do. And so there are things that happened last night that we haven't even really covered. And uh, I think as we get more reps and we go through this, uh, they'll both feel more and more comfortable. Okay, we have time for two more. Uh, Josh Robbins. Not sure how much prep you and your staff have done for Washington, but given the standings implications, I guess it makes sense to ask, uh, what concerns you about the Wizards just on a cursory level um, several days away? Well, I mean, we, uh, uh, you know, one of the one of the assistants is always like the, the game plan is done, you know, by the time the game ended last night, you know, Mike Batiste did Washington, so he's all over it. And um, I've watched, you know, I watched their game from last night this morning. So obviously, I mean, their guards, you know, the, the Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal um, duo is, is a tough cover. Um, I think that they're, they're explosive. You guys remember last year with Bertans being a big, I think, X factor in that because of his range. Um, you know, he puts a lot of pressure on your defense. Um, so there's, you know, a lot of things that you have to do at that end of the floor. I actually think playing Miami is, is a good, uh, in many ways, is a good team to, you know, because there are similarities with uh, some of the strengths because of their personnel. And the last question for Dan Savage. Uh, Cliff, you know, how did you approach today? How will you approach the, the next two days? Obviously, you know, game prep, travel, uh, all with, you know, holiday mixed in. Yeah, I mean, I think most coaches are like this. Like, I, I like the holidays, and uh, I don't like to take uh, time away from the guys. Today was very light. Um, you know, we just shot. You know, we came in, they got loose. We did a bunch of shooting so they can get back and spend the day with their family. And we're actually, we're not going to fly until tomorrow night. We're not going to leave until early evening. So we'll get there later, but I would rather do that um, so they can have the day with their families and, uh, you know, enjoy Christmas. I mean, we travel so much and these guys are forced away from, especially the guys that have kids away from their families so much that uh, I just think it's the best way to go. In terms of the second part, I think that will be one of the biggest factors in this, uh, what is going to be a, a shortened, very condensed schedule for every team. We're not going to be able to practice much anymore the way we'd want to practice. And what I do like, you know, we, we just talked about Cole and Chuma. And the same with our older guys. I believe one of our strengths is we have smart guys. So I think we can go in a ballroom and change a coverage. Um, we've done that for the two years we've been here. And you have to be able to do that. Now, you know, we won't have two days off between games again until February 3rd. So things are going to happen and there's going to be small injuries. More guys will play. This is, I've never seen this. This is 21 years for me. I've never seen a schedule this condensed, nothing even close to it. And so how we, how we practice, 
and how we can um, set the right, uh, you know, environment around our team mentality so that we're making progress. Because as you guys know, the longer the season goes on, the higher the execution and the details have to be. And it's going to be more challenging without being able to practice much. Thank you, Cliff. All right. Merry Christmas.